Yes, Vaidhi. Yes. Hello. Welcome all to Global Yoga Festival. This uh, Global Yoga Festival uh, is conducted every Saturday and Sunday from 6 to 6 40. It gives us knowledge of yoga, the art of yoga, and bhajans, kirtans, and more about yoga. A knowledge about more knowledge about yoga. So today's session uh, will be yoga for sportsmen, sportsmanship, endurance, positivity, and self control by Sahani Sohni. Sanya Sohni. So Sanya Sohni has been a student of Swasti Yoga Center and thrives to plant the seed of yoga in the people who come across her. Along with that, she is also studying psychology from Pune University to understand the correlation between the human mind and the body and ancient yogic techniques better. She's actively including knowledge from psychology and yoga to add value to herself as well as her students. On a personal front, she's enjoying the journey of life while being amazed by every experience that deepens her perspective about yoga through every aspect of her life. Today, she'll be speaking about yoga and for sports and sportsmanship. So let's welcome Sanya together with a round of applause. Welcome, Sanya. Thank you, Vedanji, for the warm welcome. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Sanya, and I will begin the session with an invocation to Sage Patanjali. Chittasya padena vacham Malam sharira sacha vaidya kena Yo pakarotam praviram munina Patanjalim branjali rana torsumi Uh, so today I'll be speaking about yoga for sportsmen and sportsmanship. Yoga in general, when spoken of with sports, the idea is restricted to performing asanas for flexibility. Yoga for flexibility in sports without a doubt is of prime importance. But along with that, we will discover uh, how principles of yoga influences the overall personality of a sports person. And also we will explore the coexisting relation between yoga and uh, yoga and sports so let's start by defining the qualities of a sports person and a yogi whenever we think of a sports person the first and foremost quality that comes to our mind is their unwavering focus and determination as disciples of yoga we all know that uh, one of the connotations given by grammarian panini is uh, concentration so no matter what sports the person is playing if they are successful at it it is because of concentrated mental and physical efforts discipline a sports person has a strict workout regime they have a strict diet to follow they have to maintain a balance between work and rest this discipline is crucial in getting compounding results. There is a book called Atomic Habits where the author speaks about uh, how it is the one percent or the small habits doing every day that matter. It is the one percent that we do every day that results into a hundred percent on a hundredth day. So compounding law is where uh, habits stack up percent by person, resulting into fruition of goal, which is also similar to yoking in yoga. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, even though the results may not appear uh, during the peak of investing efforts a sports person does not give up saying that this is not meant for me which leads me to two lessons of yoga first being abhyas as prescribed by sage patanjali and second which is dhairya as mentioned in hatha yoga pradipika third is willingness to learn a good sports person knows that his knowledge and his practice isn't ultimate he has to keep himself open to learning closing himself to learning will result in stunted growth which is why they have to keep the fire of enthusiasm in them burning which brings me back to the previous topic which is discipline because not all days may feel like where they are ready to give their best but it is the 1% of enthusiasm which takes them forward uh, accepting failure and success equally what does equanimity of mind mean for a sports person it means that even if they attain success or even if they face failure they have to continue moving forward no matter what the result of their action has been they have to uh, they have to have a neutral perspective towards their success or failures and that acts as a fuel in taking them a step ahead so does that mean that uh, they do not enjoy their victories absolutely not they enjoy their victories wholeheartedly while also keeping in mind that both success and failure are temporary and if you look at the journey of a sports person with regards to a competition the success is only momentary their journey consists mostly of failures they have to face multiple failures in order to face that one moment of success surrender to coach a good sports person has to surrender to coach they have to put their trust in coach and it isn't easy that training itself isn't easy and also surrendering to coach isn't easy because they have to trust another human being with their goals they have to trust another human being with their career with their well being and but if they do not do that they will be facing antarayas such as uh, doubt or samshay within themselves or uh, pramath or misplaced priorities and this is parallel to having faith or ishwar pranidhan in yoga i have missed one point here which is taking action i'll get back to that so uh, all of these qualities are interrelated uh sports person even though they are focused they are human beings too and like all human beings are subject to sufferings of being human they are too so uh, along with unavoidable external factors they are subject to antarayas or internal obstacles but a good sports person overcomes the obstacles by taking action they work with a sense of duty towards their goal goal which is parallel to a uh, first law of karma in bhagavad gita along with the before mentioned qualities they also have the qualities of patience titiksha or forbearance which is the ability to endure that which is of not their liking their training is immensely painful but they have to develop a liking and also a sense of duty towards it and if you have a heart to heart conversation with a sports person you will understand that um We'll just resume in a short while uh, till the connectivity gets okay.
Yes. This is again uh, an important quality <laughs> where a sportsman is always equipped with. There are some of the other hurdles that come in the life of the whole sportsman. But that's how yoga helps you to accept them with a smile on your face. So we'll have a pause. Till then, if anybody wants to share some of their experiences regarding uh, sports or any acquaintances they had with sportsmen and uh, how these practices, mindfulness practices or yogic practices have helped them, they can, we can use this time for sharing of your experiences. So all are welcome. Till Sanya ji join in. So, hi. Actually, I wanted to uh, say something as a physiotherapist. We are dealing with sports people like who are um, immature, like they're just learning, getting into the sports. So, we are dealing, uh, am I audible? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Yeah. So, he, we are de dealing with them on a daily basis, teaching them exercises, teaching them how to get better at the sport they're playing. So this is really important because since they're young, they're getting into sports or maybe they're already into sports. They have won some championships and then they are coming for some injury treatment. So they are already very down. So no one pays attention to them in that way. So basically, this part is also important and maybe more important than the physical part. So... The, the topic is really nice for me because uh, they are more, mostly demotivated. Like they lose, they win matches. And as yoga says that we have to be equal to win and lose. lose. Quality of Sita Pranya really helps. Lord yeah. Bankim Ji might recite the Sutra from Bhagavad Gita. Shoka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shamir Ji has raised her hand. So please. I also have raised my hand and like just to to follow up with what has what has been said um, just before like for the point of surrender to the coach like if then the people are coming to yoga so sometimes like the surrendering to the coach of course it's necessary for the sportsmen otherwise like the the training or like they won't probably succeed but on the other hand it's a crucial part i've just been thinking because like okay surrendering i mean surrendering to ishwara yes and if they can see ishwara in the sportsman as well that's in the trainer as well in the coach that's fine but it's kind of a hard thing and maybe the coach might not be that developed it might be he might be or she not the let's say a two-spirited person and so therefore that's a crucial thing like for for either way like for the coach as well as for the sportsman and then if they are coming to the yoga afterwards and maybe sometimes i've been got introduced to a lot of sport people who really got disappointed within their coach for different reasons. And so I think that's also an interesting point. Yes. Thank you. Very true. Very true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a very uh, important point added. And uh, this is a very, uh, like, specifically a dilemma which is there in the mind of not only a sports person, but every student. And you're Maybe I find some inspiration from Vedas, where initially they have talked about the karma kind. First, surrender and follow. And if you find some flaws, the Jnana kind will help you. The Jnana Yoga will help you to understand the solutions to the flaws. And so you will help to improve the system. You will help to the coach to be a better coach. <laughs> so as we know that every human is not perfect. So the coach is also not perfect. So maybe in the process, the student will help the coach to be a better coach. <laughs> That's exactly. what the spirit of yoga could help. Exactly. And so it might also be like, sorry for interrupting, like I'm not coming back to what I've said. And so it might be also like a nice job for the yoga instructor or the teacher, like to reestablish the certain sort of trust again, like in some other person or like in surrendering to someone sort of. Yes. Sorry. Absolutely. Yeah. So both these aspects are very, very important. Blind surrender is also not like, um, is not good. But at the same time, somewhere to start with, you need to have this quality of having faith. Shraddha is important also, but blind faith is also not good. So a unique balance is being required. And I'm very happy to have this healthy discussion. We have, I think, Kalyaniji Madam also is there. We can invite them also. Bankimji, please. <laughs> Yeah, one, you know, 
one uh, sentence which uh, Sanya ji mentioned about, uh, you know, to uh, feel one moment of success, the sports person may have to go through, you know, multiple failures. And uh, that is true in real life as well. So, you know, there's something to pick up from sports. And I think, I mean, you know, we follow cricket and we have so many, seen so many examples that many great, you know, batsmen, they got out on zero, you know, in both the innings. In fact, many cases, not only both innings, but the, let's say one test got out on zero on both innings, second test got dropped from the team, right? And then, you know, with sheer determination, they could come back. And then they, you know, were considered to be, you know, one of the greatest in, you know, the history. So, absolutely true. I would like to add one example because every time, as far as cricket comes in, <laughs> you have the god of cricket, Sachin Tendulkar, and whenever his name is there, his friend also, his name, the name of his friend also arises. And many of you might be knowing that is Vinod Kamli. So both of them started their journey at the same level. Both were equally talented under the guidance of the same guru. <laughs> but always the example of uh, uh, Kamliji is given of how not to <laughs> a talented star can come down and uh, what are the qualities that are required in a sportsman or a yogi that makes you somebody like Sachin Tendulkar. So in the Antarayas, I always find the example which has been given. Anavasti <clears throat> Anavastitatva is, yes, you achieve the taste of success, but not everybody is able to live with that success. That is what we call it Siddhis, as far as yoga is concerned. So what is the Vibhuti path talking about? It might happen that you might get all the success, you might be able to taste the success, but there is high possibility that you might get addicted with those comforts of your success. And you might start using that success for your personal gains, not for the social welfare. And that is the point where again, the decline or the collapse of a yogi starts. So only if a yogi has the highest level of vairagya, then he is able to think about others first, where he uses his siddhis or whatever he has achieved for the betterment of the world. So in the world of cricket, we can understand the God of cricket played for the country, not for his personal gains. Whereas sometimes today you find sportsmen they are very much involved into their personal branding, getting high fees and all these things and playing for the country or playing for the sports is somewhere lost. So this is where I feel uh, the ideas which are there in yoga can be very, very helpful for the new generation of sportsmen, giving them the right motivation and the solutions to overcome the challenges. So that was one, small, not small, but a big thought. <laughs> So, and there is request. there is one verse, you know, I think 12th chapter uh, Bhagavad Gita, uh, and it sums up many of these qualities which you just mentioned, you know, Santushta Satatam Yogi Yatatma Dhrana Nishchaya Mayar Pita Manor Buddhi Yomad Bhakta Same Priya. I mean, it's a Amruta Shtaka of the Bhakti Yoga, but sant, you know, Santushta uh, Satatam Yogi, that means, you know, a yogi, again, sports person, always Santushta content. But Drada Nishchai, you know, and, you know, the feet on the ground and probably, you know, someone, you know, who will be dear So you know, and Mayar Pita Manor Buddhi, that means, you know, Ishwar Pranidha, that, you know, surrender to the coach. Uh, and then, you know, yeah, you can get away with, you know, what you just mentioned, you know, difference between Sachin and Vinod Kamli. Kalani, uh, madam, yes. Yes, Namaste, sir. Uh, yes, very true, say, uh, Bankim Sarji. Uh, each and every topic in yoga and uh, especially in Patanjali Yoga Darshan, uh, we can apply in uh, uh, sports. Uh, either uh, you will get the yam or niyam, ahinsa, satya, asteya, brahmacharya, aparigraha, each and every uh, concept. If uh, a sports person follow, he will never get uh, uh, downward. Uh, he will never uh, fall downward. Even niyam, short santosh tap swadhyay ishwar pranidhan. Short vacha uh, kaya vacha manasa means uh, your thinking should be pure. Your uh, uh, speech should be pure. 
right now we will uh, uh, we are seeing that uh, we, uh, each and every means uh, the sports person are very arrogant they are very uh, means uh, they are just uh, indulging in comparing themselves with others uh, other uh, sport person uh, like uh, vikas sir always say that uh, they are not uh, uh, they are not uh, drawing their, their line larger than an, another they are trying to erase others line by speaking uh, uh, um, um, opposite I mean, by speaking negative up, uh, up about the other uh, uh, sport persons so the niyam also they should follow and uh, here sadhak uh, badhak tatva they are also very important to follow here for uh, each and every sports person so i think each and every concept each and every sutra each and every verses are very important uh, uh, nowadays uh, for a, uh, for becoming a good uh, sports sport person good yogi in their field so that's all <laughs> thank you thank you lady madam uh, ashish ji yes please uh yes uh, am i audible to you sir yes 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 uh, sir as you said uh, means you haven't given the example of uh, sachin tendulkar the cricket of uh, god of cricket uh, i just want to mention one memory means one of uh, my known person uh, he he was having uh, you know uh, the connection with uh, the yoga guru uh, ayanga sir okay means uh, he actually he uh, you know he was working uh, for him uh so he he was saying me that uh, you know he used to see a sachin tendulkar there at uh, ayangar sir there okay and uh, you know the coincidentally what happens that whenever that sachin uh, you know having a bad patch as you said as a bankim sir said that uh, if the batsman got out for a zero uh, i mean sachin uh, was having a bad patch in his career also so whenever he uh, you know was seeing a bad patch he uh, not uh, succeeded to uh, score a runs he used to uh, visit ayangar sir and i'm not sure means whether it's you know uh, resulting in the improve his performance but i believe uh, that to come out of that phase you know to deal with that phase of a bad patch uh, he used to uh, visit ayangar uh, sir uh, for i believe for the motivation or uh, for you know you know the remedies and i think uh, it's beneficial for him as we said uh, as we say we have seen the records of him whenever he has a, he had a bad patch he came out of that and he scored the runs so i believe uh, indirectly the yoga contributed in his uh, career very true very true yoga played an important role when i have heard about these incidences about sachin tendulkar ji taking classes from the yoga guru yoga master himself um one more important quality <laughs> i i comes in my mind like it's all the way coming from the world of cricket but yes definitely we can have other sports also so um, one great personality comes in my mind is rahul dravid and i hope definitely whenever you hear this word there are a lot of great memories that come in your mind so the and definitely it would be something related with yoga it would be ekatatva abhyas it could be about all uh, anushasan and all this kind of he would be called as the wall of <laughs> indian team where once even dreadful bowlers like shoaib akhtar used to say that the only person he fears about bowling <laughs> where every indian cricketer fears facing his balls it was rahul dravid whom most of the people used to mock make fun of whenever he used to be there on the crease this so called rahul pindi express also used to get these kind of frustrations that it was the only guy who used to play fours and sixes to his such kind of fast bowling also so if you have any such kind of memories please do share uh, we have something in the chat sita pradna absolutely yes sita pradna is the absolute right word there no fear whether you are playing to a fast bowler what would be the consequences no he is completely balanced in his own inner strength which no one could uh what we can call it as move him from that particular innings others anyone anyone privi ji yes welcome sir i would like to say something good evening everybody so um, i do not have much background of yoga um but uh, 
I am a sports person from a very, uh, very uh, young age. So I used to play karate. And uh, so we used to have a lot of fights and, you know, all of this. So um, I just wanted to say this surrender to coach. Um, this really helps. I mean, um, I, when I was learning it, I was, I think, 12 or 13 years of age. So I did not have, you know, a lot of doubts and uh, uh, what do you say? Don't, I, I, I don't used to give so much of thoughts as to, to practice or not to practice, whether this coach is good or not. But, um, but once you believe, but when, once you start believing in someone and once you start to enjoy this pro uh, that process, I think it becomes really, really easy. Uh, so sometimes the overthinking kills your joy and, uh, you know, um, uh, you waste a lot of time just uh, finding a good uh, good coach or whosoever the mentor is. I think the key point is to get started. If you like it, just, just get started, get there and, you know, um, enjoy that. So uh, again, as I said, I don't have yoga bahut sara background, but... Yes, uh, when I uh, when I <laughs> when I got to know that today is this topic, I was just thinking, ki what could be really into it? I knew uh, for uh, you know for stretches, post work post workout, yeah, post um, fight and everything, we used to have some stretches and all of that. So I was aware that this is going to be the part of it. But what else? Now I really look back, uh, though I have never given any thought to it. But I think all these qualities which are mentioned in, in front of us, I can totally relate to it, uh, what, what I have learned during my, you know, uh, those days. And even now I started, you know, two, two years back, I started playing kettlebell sport. I think this is going to help me. I will, I will really remember this. And uh, um, it, is, it is going to help me, you know, grow. Uh, physically, you know, I'm taking uh taking uh, proper guidance but i think mentally uh, this is this is this is really going to help me i just remember this that you know i have to remember <laughs> uh, that i have to work on my mental strength so yeah I, and today's topic is just amazing it is really close to my heart <laughs> I would okay. like to everyone to give a big round of applause because she has started again baby <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's that's very very important because today, what we have is the main reason why people quit playing is the parents have this perception. Mm -hmm. Only if you win medal, if you have a career, if you can earn an income, you have to play. I think this is a very wrong perception of defining success. Uh, we don't have to play only just to win or to get medals. I think as sports, everybody is a sportsman at their yeah. level. <laughs> we all have played since childhood. But exactly. that has helped us, you know, wherever we are, whatever we are. Exactly. Doing. So when I when I actually uh, teach my son, he wants to play cricket, uh, and I don't know cricket because I never played as such. But uh, I I have to remind him every time, you know, that stay focused because he will play one ball and he will start doing something else. <laughs> so I think that is why I'm saying that this this thing is is really going to help me. I'll I'm I'll try to keep everything in mind, and I'll try to you know. Uh, inculcate these habits into my son as well so yeah very good very great topic good. great topic <laughs> especially for you know girls uh, here i would strongly recommend you know to see few videos of uh, uh, smriti mandana in fact this year she got uh, i think the international you know the best uh, cricket uh, woman player award but the reason I mention is because, you know, we mentioned about, you know, Sita Pragna. And if you see her, then 100%, you will see, a, you know, a smile brimming from the face, no matter what. And uh, I would strongly, I mean, I have not uh, talked to her or, you know, did not have an interaction, but, you know, just looking, looking at her, the way she plays, you can make out that you know uh, she is someone special okay and i my to me she is a lady sachin tendulkar put it that way and obviously she is making it big you know uh, i think only for 
maybe probably for some of these qualities. I have seen. My daughter is a fan of her. You know, she probably sometimes you know, sorry. is pushing me. <laughs> okay, sorry, Bankim. Yes, Prajekta ji. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, I just want to mention one wonderful interview of Rahul Dravid. I have seen uh, some days back. It's an old interview, uh, not interview. His speech, one of his famous speeches, in some IIT Kanpur, I guess. Uh, I. Uh, in that interview, he was uh, telling you your growth should be like a bamboo tree. Your success, your growth, your development should be like a bamboo tree. Should be, <coughs> your growth should be first, it should be under the ground. Make your roots strong first, and then that success will follow. It's such a wonderful speech. Uh, I always listen to that. Uh, I will try to share it on our group too. Very inspirational speech. I, that man is really awesome. So, you know, like they call it wall of cricket. So, yes, he is like that kind of person. Sthita Pradnya. Really admire him for that. We have the idea of Abhyas. So, to Dirga Kal, Nairantar, Satkara, Sevitu. And when he comes on the pitch, <laughs> you will realize all the qualities stay fit. The wall, whoever is the baller, whatever is the team, whichever is the match, no, you yes. cannot penetrate. Even if all the batting line is going down and the moment you have Rahul Dravid, yes, no more chances of Indian <laughs> wickets falling down. And <clears throat> one more incident that just came in my mind that where most of the time it used to happen, like um, the, the World Cup was in England and the Indian... Um, so-called environmental conditions are quite different than that of uh, when you want to play in Lords and England, uh, considering the kind of winter and everything. So out of his own pocket, he sacrificed it one year before the World Cup. He went there before the team and the whole year he practiced it in the situation so that he could adapt himself for the kind of conditions which are there in England. So that is the level of zeal, dedication, passion. Never these kind of legends have a second thought. Why should I spend more? Will my Indian team sponsor me? Where will I find a sponsor? Who will pay for this? What will happen in my home? <laughs> all these, this, these kind of questions, which an average, we all average people get these kind of questions. But the legends are different. They sacrifice everything for the country. And um, when he was being asked, like many a times you're not given the kind of credit or the respect or the coverage in the media, like other stars like Sachin Tendulkar or Ganguly, they get. He said, for me, getting an opportunity to play for my country is the highest kind of reward. And if I'm able to play for my country, I don't need anything, any more glamour, name, fame, nothing. nothing. Everything is small in front of playing for India. So I think now, <laughs> I was just trying to cover some time, but we have Sanya ji. Sanya ji, are you there? Okay, okay, yeah. No. We are not able to get her. So maybe we can continue with our discussion. Hey, she is there. She, <laughs> she is, is there? there. She is there. She had joined already. She called me now. Actually, she was giving the session and she didn't know even this, uh, this session is... Okay, Sorry. interrupted. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> she is totally engaged into the session. Oh, wow, wow. She just called me. But, but we lost her. You can just... Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Know. So that's again a quality of a sportsman. She was into meditation. She completed the session. <laughs> we will have her session once again. But lovely. I really love the way she uh, tried to correlate both these ideas. Because many a times application part is missing. We learn yogic practices but how to apply in different conditions in different disciplines is a big challenge and we are very happy to have this kind of hard work done by Sanya ji let's wait for her we will invite someone whom who has not spoken we have also Pragya ji Paula and uh, yes so if they want to share anything.
Okay. So what I will do is till then I will narrate a story. <laughs> Would you like to have that? <laughs> so what happens is there is a king who has learned the best kind of martial arts and different skills of war from his guru, his teacher. Now, why are we discussing this is because we had this guru, shishya, teacher, student, coach and sportsman kind of relationship. So why we should have faith? I don't know what this story will help you. Like there are different shades of this story, how we interpret it. But I'll just narrate the story. You can uh, have different interpretations. So one day, the king feels that I have excelled the art of uh, swordsmanship. Uh, I, can, I can fight far more better than my teacher. So let's make a fun of my teacher. Not in fun, but let's try to see how... Uh, I think Sanya ji is there. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I am extremely sorry. I had a network issue and I didn't realize it. For the past 20 minutes, I was continuing the lecture and now I just checked my phone and realized that I, I was being called and told that the video is paused. I'm extremely sorry about it. So <laughs> I, will begin with the, <laughs> I will begin with the lecture again. Uh, so please, can you tell me where did the video stop? Uh, it, it, yeah, we covered the first slide and now we will move to the second slide. So maybe from the second slide, is it okay? Yeah. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir, definitely. Okay, yoga for endurance. So let's start by defining endurance first. Uh, endurance is the capacity of something to last or to withstand wear and tear. As yogasana practitioners, uh, we all know that how much physical and mental strength it requires to hold an asana. And uh, we also know that with time and practice, the ability increases. So, which is why practice of asanas is recommended to sports person because they need endurance on field so that they do not face immediate muscle fatigue. Muscle memory is also uh, an ability of the muscle to uh, retain the memory or uh, memory of a movement and that increases is again with practice of asana so when we are practicing asanas we are doing it with awareness and that awareness can be utilized on field increasing flexibility and agility so just to mo make movements of sports person faster increase uh, recommendation of asanas is uh, required to them because uh, if you take example of olympic runner they, if they wish to be the winner they, winner, they will require more endurance and agility in their muscles so they don't tire themselves out and also so that they are able to move faster than their competitors. Increasing body's awareness with respect to pauses and movements. So if we take example of a cricketer here, a batsman has to know when to swing the bat, how far to swing the bat, when they have to start running, when they have to stop running. and if uh, that awareness is not developed within their mind and body. It will not only cost them their time because every second on uh, field counts. So it will cost them their time and also it will cost them their accuracy. Importance of Sukshma Vyaya in preparing for movement. So uh, no matter what sport a person is playing, uh, their warm up exercise can be personalized according to the sport, but Sushma Vyayam is recommended for practice before every uh, hardcore warm up exercises because again Sushma Vyayam is performed with awareness with coordination of breath and it prepares the joints uh, to move faster for movement basically it prepares the joints for movement and also gets the circulation in our body pumping. And stretching is recommended for cool down. So if we take example of a marathon runner here, their lower body is most utilized while running. And if they have to reduce the soreness after the practice, stretching is recommended in the form of asana. So if a marathon runner practice padhastasan, they practice paschimottanasan, um, skandasan, these practices will help them in lowering their soreness. Next slide, please. Yes. 
yoga for working in a team so in the first point i am speaking of team in a very broad term i'm not just speaking about team on field so it is important uh, that they are aware of what kind of people they surround themselves with if the people they are with are not supportive of their goals it is going to shake their determination and as opposed to if they are surrounded with people who are supportive even if they are their competitors competitors and a sports person themselves share, share the same goal so if they perform or practice with a, a healthy mindset then that will help them attain their goal faster and it will sh will not shake their determination or self confidence and this in the second half i speak strictly with regards to uh, the team on field and i recommend chitta prasadanam technique for mental peace and also for team building so maitri develop friendship with those who succeed and be happy for their success if a sports person is jealous of the competitor's success that will cost him firstly their mental peace and that also makes him a bad sports person and it influences the team in a very bad way it uh, changes the relationship with them and everyone they are around with karuna develop compassion for those who suffer from failure instead of feeling egoistic pride leading to think they are better than everyone else if success gets to their head again that is going to change their relationship uh, with their team because uh, firstly their the team is not going to be open to them about their goals about their friendship and uh, that will simply change their relationship with the team mudito feel delighted for those practicing fairness in sports one should encourage the practice of fairness they themselves should not uh, engage in mal practices and upeksha if uh, someone they know is practicing uh, mal practices then they should not take a violent approach towards them in india we especially get to see this uh, with respect to cricket if uh, a decision is left to an empire and the empire declares the result in favor of one team the another team's coach the another team's owner the people who are supporting the team all of them are frustrated and uh, they should keep in mind that it is a sport and they should be uh, happy for the other person's uh, success and if the decision is actually unfair then they should take a non judgmental and ahimsak approach towards uh, taking uh, towards taking a fair decision next slide feel please mindfulness over for overcoming challenges in sports so uh, the most common challenges faced by sports person our performance anxiety having negative thoughts towards their competitors and fear of failure and here i uh, speak of mindfulness synonymously with practice of dharana and dhyan in yoga so this was a research that was done on sports person on athletes and uh, they were induced mindfulness meditation and this was the conclusion the uh, the points mentioned in the slide was the conclusion so first athletes are able to focus on task rather than fear of outcome when one thinks about the outcome a lot their awareness is taken uh, from the present moment and they are not able to give their best in the current moment so obviously their result is not going to be as they expected so if they practice mindfulness meditation their awareness in the present moment increases and they are able to give their best in the task it reduces anxiety to uh, decreased occurrence of negative thoughts and pre competitive stress increased performance accuracy and optimism and alignment with flow so the term flow here is of very important uh, is of prime importance in sports psychology it is derived from sports psychology and athletes were asked what flow is to them so they define it uh, as follows you lose awareness of time athletes who experience flow often describe how time slows down or stops so only the present moment matters to them and they are not worried about the future or the past self consciousness fades away meaning uh, 
there is only the existence of action there is no ego and uh, even in practice of uh, dhyan and samadhi we realize how uh, the object of focus and uh, the action of doing only these two persist and the doer gradually fades away you are focused only on the present moment and your work in the moment seems fluid and effortless so achieving effortlessness in their practice is uh, again important is of importance to them and that can be attained through mindfulness meditation and uh, effortlessness is also when the challenge meets the skillfulness of the sports person so that is again parallel to one of the definitions uh, given in bhagavad gita that skillfulness in action is yoga next slide please and this was the um, method of mindfulness meditation that was induced for the athletes open awareness activity open awareness activity is where uh, the current state of emotions was uh, brought into their awareness so whatever it may be it it could have been positive or negative that state of awareness was brought into their awareness so they were actually able to work on it if one is not uh, aware of what they are currently feeling then there is very little chance they are able to work with it second caring thoughts for self and teammates so here pre competitive stress was dealt with and uh, they were wishing well to themselves as well and also to their competitors concentration exercises your visualization technique was applied so there was another research study where visualization uh, was applied and the result was that people who were practicing visualization their accuracy on field was increased the uh, whatever act they have to perform on field for example if it's running so whatever their goal is they were uh visualizing that continuously and their performance as compared to those who do not perform visualization was more than the other practicing ac acceptance of negative mind states so here they were asked to recall a time an event in their past where they have felt frustration or failure and uh, they were asked to practice detachment gradually not immediately gradually they were asked to practice detachment and uh, non judgmental attitude towards that emotion so uh, later the relationship with that event was also changed so if they recall that event it doesn't induce the same emotion in them as it did so what happens is when a person is doing a task over and over again and if that task in the past has given them failure when they perform it the next time the fear of failure comes first so that kind of emotions and thoughts thoughts are coming first so practicing acceptance of negative thoughts and changing the relationship towards them uh, through detachment uh, and non judgmental attitude changes the relationship with that act next slide please okay so here i speak about the importance of pranayama and uh, this slide or uh, this slide is taken from uh, a book called breathology and it is written by a person uh, who is uh, a sports person himself and he is a scuba diver so scuba divers require holding of their breath under water and he has made reference to how yogic techniques have helped them helped him and uh, he has recommended first rhythmic breathing being awareness of inhalation and exhalation first increasing the duration of uh, inhalation and exhalation but also he has given more importance to kambhak or retention of breath breath and also he has given importance to retention after exhalation and here we see why Uh, when we hold our breath the spleen contracts and releases its store of red blood cells to the body thereby increasing the oxygen reserve to the body more oxygen in the muscle cells will naturally enhance performance and enable them to work harder and for a longer stretch of time so uh, this will avoid from uh, getting 
immediate muscle fatigue increasing their endurance and it will also decrease immediate hyperventilation when a person is reaching their state of fatigue then they start reaching a state of hyperventilation because their uh, body is lacking uh, oxygen so they uh, start breathing faster so that the body is able to meet meet the required demand of oxygen so if they practice kumbhak more then the state of fatigue will be prolonged next slide please so this is a testimony given in the same book by an three time olympic games participant uh, and world champion in 400 meters freestyle I use my breathing exercises when I have to warm up my lungs. It makes me feel fresh and prepared for the training of the day. I also use them when I prepare mentally, visualizing my race. Before a race, I use them to raise my pulse or if I need to calm my nerves. So again, performance anxiety is reduced here by performing uh, breathing exercises and awareness of their body is increased. Next slide, please. Brainwave activity of sportsmen and yogis. Uh, brainwave are four states of the brain uh, when performing different activities. So there are four, alpha, beta, theta, and gamma. And in sportsmen, theta and delta frequencies are more when they are relaxing. And when they are winning, they are in an alpha state, which is also called as the flow state. So the creativity increases in alpha state. I will also would like to mention a few more benefits of the alpha state. Lowering stress, reducing anxiety, decreasing depression and improving creative thinking. It often means that a person is focused on a specific thought and not paying attention to unwanted distraction. Uh, when they are not performing well, they are in a beta or a gamma state. So beta and gamma states are not necessarily bad states, but that is just an observation. Uh, when beta and gamma states are induced, their uh, electrical impulses in their brain are much higher. And if they are not in moderation, that again leads to anxiety. Inducing alpha and theta state can be used for recovery from injury. As I mentioned uh, about the visualization practice earlier, if during mindfulness meditation, alpha state is induced, the body is able to respond to the mind's intentions better. Alpha state is attained when one is meditating or practicing mindfulness. So this is an observation from a yogi's practice of meditation. So there is where there is resemblance between a brainwave of sportsmen and a yogi. Next slide, please. Recommended yoga regime to a sports person, starting with Sukshma Vyaya. Second is Sthula Vyayam. In Sthula Vyayam, I highly recommend Surya Namaskara because not only it warms up the entire body, but it also um, induces the uh, Surya force within, which is responsible for activity or aggression towards the task. So uh, I don't mean about aggression negatively. Ag aggression is just with the, enthousi the enthusiasm with which they are able to perform the activity. Uh, asanas can be personalized as per the sport. Some of the suggestions are for lower body uh, strength and flexibility, Padhastasan, Skandasan, Devi Asan, Utkatasan, Veerbhadrasan, Paschimottanasan. For core and upper body strength, planks and variations, Naukasans, inversions. Breathing practices, Anulom Vilom with kundha, Kumbhak. Regular breathing, uh, rhythmic breathing with increased duration gradually. Omkar chanting, visualization technique uh, of meditation followed by mindfulness. Next slide, please. So thank you all for lending me their precious time and making up for the lost time also. Thank you so much. And thank you Swasti Yoga Center for giving me a platform to share my opinions. Uh, thank you so much, Sanya ji. Thank you. For this wonderful uh, session. Most of uh, them uh, in yoga and uh, 
they are very interested i mean uh, physiotherapy uh, they are very interested in um, sports so most of them choose the sports sports brand and this was really helpful for me personally and uh, like uh, so uh, yes thank you so much and i would like to ask vikas sir for the felicitation absolutely i would request everyone to unmute themselves and give a big round of applause it actually requires a sort sportsmanship spirit to again come back and give the same session again from the beginning with the same enthusiasm <laughs> you know how challenging it is once you complete yeah. it <laughs> Yeah, so this was not really a small thing. Yeah, right, Sanjay. Yeah. Yes, sir, definitely. Yes, we all enjoyed it, and thank you very much on behalf of all of the family, Swasti family, Parivar. Thank you. We appreciate all your great efforts that you have put into the research that you have put into the sincere efforts which are into, and um, yes, people across the globe are listening to what you have said, the recommendations. and the idea of yoga beyond asanas beyond postures and beyond physical practices even sports is not only a physical activity it is a complete integration and alignment of all the koshas together and that is where you have rightly pointed out the influence of yoga i think definitely the generations to come and the sportsmen who are right now in the making will get the best advantage of this and even yoga teachers instructors would be inspired to think and look into these philosophies of yoga many times we have this kind of feedback ye kya padh rahe what are we the learning all this where are we going to apply <laughs> so you have made the right start there are different ways in which we can apply this thank you very much sanjay thank you sir so i'll end the session with shanti mantra uh सहनावतु सहनो भुनकतु सह वीर करवाहे तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्त मेदेशे अ शांति 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 थैंक यू थैंक यू सानिया जी थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सो मच फॉर अटेंडिंग द सेशन एवरीवन टुमारो इज एन इंटरेस्टिंग सेशन बाय आवर ओन श्वेता मेरी छोटे मैम it will be on mindful eating so do uh, visit yeah <laughs> bill no <laughs> thank you very much everyone yes, thank you everyone thank you sania thank you thank you thank you sir